Hi, this is Scott Aldrich with Modus GI, and I'm here tonight with Dr. Jason Samarasina. He's the Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine and the Program Director of Advanced Endoscopy and EUS Fellowship of GI at UCI Health. And we're here tonight to talk about challenges in colonoscopy due to inadequate bowel prep. Scott, it's a pleasure to be here in this call with you and, um, you know, talking about this. So when we're talking about uh, maybe more critical patients that are in, unable to tolerate a prep, uh, can't hold, hold it down for some reason or another, and, and are presenting for their colonoscopy with inadequate bowel prep, we're just wondering, you know, what options you have for those patients and how um, you handle them at UCI. So, you know, what we've typically done is really what we've done for, for years and years. And if we have an inpatient on the floor, when we go see them in the morning to assess if, you know, they can come down for their colonoscopy, you know, it's usually talking to the patient, talking to the nurse and understanding, you know, what the color of the effluent is that's coming out. And if that effluent isn't, isn't clear, yellow, and there's still some solid component to that, that patient will basically will be taken off the list for today and they will be given more go lightly solution, uh, which is sort of our standard preparation in the hospital. That patient will then have to prep for that day. And then um, the next morning, we'll go back and do the same thing again and assess their effluent and see if they're kind of meet the criteria for coming down. And if they don't meet the criteria that day, the same thing happens is another gallon of go lightly. Sure. And, um, you know, they're just, you know, stuck with trying to get their effluent clear. And we essentially, you know, often just leave them up on the floor till we get the result we're looking for before we bring them down. And the reason for that is, you know, GI lab resources are are valuable. And um, if we bring down a patient and we do a non-diagnostic study because of poor prep, we've sort of wasted everybody's time, added risk to the patient unnecessarily. And so that would be, you know, our rationale for doing that. You know, is there is there a typical uh, length of stay for these delayed patients? I know, obviously, you probably, without looking at the statistics, wouldn't be able to put a number on it specifically for your institution. But is there a sort of a typical delayed length for these patients that are unable to prep? You know, not typically, but it's really not uncommon for somebody to be delayed by at least one day, and it's and it's a full twenty four hours. It's you know, our, it's not really our practice to say oh, let's give them, you know, four more liters like in the next three, four hours and see if we can add them on for the afternoon. It typically just is the practice to oftentimes, you know, get them to slowly prep throughout the day, maybe um, prep a little bit quicker towards the afternoon, evening, and then sort of get ready. So it's um, at least a 24-hour period. And I think that makes sense uh, in terms of what we're hearing from others as well, that it, it does vary greatly. Um, but the 24-hour period is, is just about most common with these patients. So my next question is in regards to the, uh, the peer view system. So how would you describe the role that peer view can play with these specific scenarios? And, and if you could point to any of your successes uh, now or in the past, uh, it would be appreciated. Yeah, so I had the um, opportunity to use the peer view system as part of something called the REDUCE study. Uh, we were one of the clinical sites involved in that, uh, in that trial, and that was a, a multicenter prospective study on inpatients looking at um, improving the quality of bowel prep for diagnostic colonoscopy. It would be an inpatient coming in. And um, if there was some concern about core bowel prep, uh, we would um, enroll them in the study, and then we would use the uh, the peer review system. I actually enrolled 13 patients in that trial, and everybody had a um, fantastic colonoscopy because it didn't really matter how dirty their prep was um, before we started. We got them all to a Boston bowel prep score of nine, meaning three, three, three in each segment of the colon. There's no doubt in my mind the uh, the product does exactly what it's supposed to do, and you know it does an excellent job cleaning the colon. And so now it kind of changed the algorithm a little bit in terms of those uh, when we are using the the peer view system. Happy to report that we just uh, received uh, generation two, and we're going to be uh, starting to use that as well. But now the algorithm changes because now uh, when we have a patient that's struggling um, with a bowel preparation or somebody who's done everything they're supposed to and they're still not clear, um, now that patient can come down on that same day, despite not being 
adequately prepped and we can do the colonoscopy with the peer review system and have confidence that this is not going to be a waste of everyone's time and we're going to get the quality of preparation that we need to do a good diagnostic study and move that patient's care forward. So it's, it's, it's great that way to um, have something that can speed up the process of care for those patients. I like that. A good diagnostic study and being able to move that patient's care forward, because I think that's really two important benefits to the peer review system, um, you know, overall. So, so I'm glad you were able to touch upon those things. So you talk about a quality colonoscopy, and, and I, I just would like you to elaborate just a little bit further on that in terms of um, how inadequate bowel prep maybe affects your ability to, to, to diagnose and to treat uh, these patients. Right. So, I mean, one of the most important things when it comes to colonoscopy is, is preparation. Poor preparation leads to missed diagnoses. Um, it can lead to missed lesions. Poor preparation can lead to a higher risk to the patient um, because now we're really not getting the clear, safe look that we need to kind of traverse through that colon. There's, you know, concern about doing therapy in the setting of a of poor preparation. Anytime we're using electrocautery, anytime there's risk for bleeding, we really need a, a very, very clear, clean mucosal surface to ensure that, um, you know, we can do that therapy properly. So it, it really is just absolutely critical that we have high quality preparation before we do colonoscopy, especially in the in the diagnostic therapeutic indication. Great, great. Well, look, uh, Dr. Samarcina, uh, that's all I had for you today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to speak and, and providing your valuable input. Uh, and we look forward to our next conversation. Scott, it's been a pleasure. 